So yeah, so you really do focus on the CEO aspect of like making sure that they're setting things in a good place for the right team to be successful. And like, I, I definitely see that as like somebody who I personally work with the chiropractor where it's just like easy to be like, you are getting in the way of your employees performing, performing as long as you have the right employees, as long as you have the right employees. Yes. Now, what do you do? Like there can be, okay, so let's say that I've just been like real mediocre. And I know you don't want to label people as things, but I've been a very mediocre boss. I've done a lot of stuff. So I've really created this culture where my staff can do the bare minimum because I'm doing everything. And now they're like comfy. They're comfy there. And like, we start working together and I'm like, you're right. We need clearer roles and KPIs and we're going to do these personality tests and I might take something off somebody's and move it. And like, how do you, like, how do you just have to like burn things down and start from scratch? Or like, how do you get them out of the like, oh, am I going to get a raise for working harder? Like, that's a- Am I going to get a raise for actually doing my job? Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Between us, we know that is what we want to (laughs) say. But like, how do you get like, okay, great. You've decided to change. But now the CA is like my, or the front desk feels like now my life seems more difficult. Um, I think the biggest mistake that um, people make in this situation is lack of communication. Mm. Either it's hard to communicate, they're scared to communicate it, um, or they just don't know how to communicate it. And uh, I would say communication, start early and do it often. So just kind of planting the seed about here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it and get people, a a lot of people that are coming into these jobs have no idea how a business runs and it's, it's, it's okay for the business owner to, to talk about business in terms of the, yes, the business makes money. I don't put it all in my pocket. I promise you. you. That's not how much I make, right? (laughs) I have to like pay the electric bill and the rent and your salary. And if we don't bring in a minimum amount of money, that stuff doesn't happen. And then none of us have a job. So um, here's why we're making these changes because we, we want to do better. And then I ultimately like to try it, tie it to your clients or your patients, because if we're doing a good job that, and we're making money, that means we're doing, we're helping people. And that's what we're here to do. Um, so I would communicate to them about little over time about what this means for them in terms of here's how we've been doing it. We're going to change it a little bit and here's why, um, so that they know what to expect. And ultimately, and I think you alluded to this, uh, Some people just are not going to be on board with that. And you are not going to like, you're not going to be able to help it. They're going to self-select out. I don't want accountability Mm -hmm. because I liked coming to work and slacking off. Yes, you're losing somebody and it's going to cost money to replace them. But at the end of the day, were they actually even doing anything Mm -hmm. for you to begin with? So you said the phrase self-select out and I could not agree more. So once a year I work with like 20 to 30 some chiros on like stuff, really important stuff. (laughs) And one of these things, like as they start to make changes, I realized after doing it this last year, how many people, their staff starts to like quit because like the, the owner starts waking up and going, oh, they're not helping build this business. They're actually making my life harder. And so we start putting these systems in for efficiency and accountability. And I realized going into next year's class that I almost need to give like a trigger warning of like, hey, you might lose some of your staff. You're going to be happy about it though. Trust me, you're going to be happy. But like, yeah, as soon as you start showing up differently, one of two things happens. Like, I feel like you've got the staff who are like, thank God. Yes. Like I am bored over here and this business has potential and you've been slacking. They're probably not consciously thinking that, but if they are, that's a fantastic employee or two, they're like, oh no, 
oh no. And they're like pulling up indeed or whatever, like pretty quickly to start looking for their next lazy job. And like they do, they do start, you start saying things of like, how about you set some goals and bring them to me and we'll look and see, and then bring, tell me how you think your role can go about helping produce this goal, like how you can contribute. And we'll be meeting on a monthly basis to see whether you met the goal or not. There is a a good amount of people who are just like, no, mm -mm." this job just got a little too accountable and they don't want to sit in that. Like, it's like, they know, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to meet those goals. Like, like, yes. Well, and there's a lot of, so thinking is hard. I mean, it's harder work than doing. (laughs) And there are a lot of people who just want to show up every day, have a checklist, do the checklist, check out and go home. And in some cases that works. Um, But if you're growing a business, especially a small business where everybody's wearing a lot of hats, it doesn't really work very well because um, what I like to say is when you're de- when you're delegating in that instance, you're not really saving yourself any time or energy. You're just delegating a task, but you're switching the work you do from doing the task to now you're managing the person who's doing the task. It's the same amount of work, and it's actually harder to manage people than to manage tasks. So yeah, yeah. It, it's um my twelve year old was just doing robotics this uh, robot robotics camp this week and it was mixed grades, and she's one of the older ones and just one of the more experienced in robotics and so they like they didn't get put in teams they got to like pick their teams and so like this little team emerged and like on the fourth day she is so frustrated with me because everybody's crazy and like every, like she's like today's task i was the only one who know how to do it and everybody was just bugging me asking what they could do and i was like just leave me alone you're taking and i was like and she like literally said it's just easier if i do it myself and i'm just like well charlie first of all i don't want you to feel bad because i talked to 45 year old adults uh running their business who say the exact same yep. thing yep. but like this isn't gonna go away this like slow down to go further thing that's what it is and so many kairos as we're talking about like how they're hiring and how they don't have all this stuff it's because they're going so fast already yep. and telling them like hey slow down for a sec and assess what you currently have on your team Yep. Liter- assess, like really assess your business and figure out wh- who you need to hire. Then take the time to hire. So I said, like, we used to hire one way and this most recent time we hired very, very differently. It took us four months to find the perfect person instead of typically four to six weeks. Right. Um, and the only reason it would take six weeks is because we have like a three-part hiring process of like three different... And so it was just like, but this is one of the most quality employees that we've hired in the last few years. Well, they're all great, but like, just like most surprising, like coming to me and being like, Hey, you said this thing. And I like went and looked into it and I'm like, you did. Oh my God. I love you. Um, but we had to slow down to go hold up. I know because a lot of people who are hiring they might not just be hiring because they need to add, but because somebody's leaving. Right. And so then they're like, shit, like yep. go to chat GPT, come up with a fun ad post. Like, you know, we need, a, do you love playing Legos and like healthy things? And then they throw it on there and they're like, this person is happy and they like chiropractic. You're hired. I needed you to start two weeks ago. So like when this person leaves, it's not chaos. And so like, when you tell them like, no, you need to like, slow down, you need to slow down. You're going to be understaffed for a little bit. But what I've found is during those times of being understaffed, you know, you kind of like filter through what really needs to happen. Anyways, you really start to find your broken systems um, because they become much more apparent when you're lower staff, you come up with more creative solutions as well of like, oh, so that thing used to take an hour every Monday. But now that was her role. I don't have an extra. And so like, it's crazy how the team starts to come up with these new systems that you're like, well, why weren't we doing that before? Well, because you didn't have to. You weren't in a situation where you, you know, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it is something that happens all the time where it's like, well, now it's broke. You're understaffed. You need to figure out how to. And so, but just the idea 
of slowing down, think about it, create some systems, create clarity for the person. That's another thing. Like, and that's something I've always struggled with because of my ADHD or whatever, where it's like, what's the clarity of the role? What are their expectations? How are they going to be measured? And then actually following through on all of yeah. that. I don't know how many times I have encountered a situation where when somebody leaves, all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, look at all these issues that are uncovered because this person was doing things terribly, but it was covered up. And then all of a sudden it comes to light and it's a huge mess. So yes, but yeah, right person. Off. And if you think about it, if you're hiring the right person, um, the on the whole onboarding integration process should be super minimal because anybody who gets what they're doing should be able to come in, orient themselves to your systems and everything, but then kind of be like, oh, okay, I know how this, this works. Mm -hmm. And I might have a few questions here and there, but ultimately I kind of know, I kind of get how this runs. 100%.